。那个你跟这个叫。Each of the individuals being arrested in the video is referred to as a deadbeat, which refers to debtors lacking creditworthiness. Due to long-term unpaid debts, they are now being apprehended by a joint effort of the court and the police. According to data released by a number of third-party platforms, as of June 16, 2023. The cumulative number of debtors with defaults in China has exceeded 26.65 million, with a daily increase of around 17,000 individuals. Based on this data, the annual increase in problematic debtors could potentially surpass 5 million. We cannot independently verify the accuracy of this information, but one thing is certain: the number of debtors with no creditworthiness has been rapidly increasing in the past year. It is said that courts across the country are carrying out large-scale arrest operations targeting these individuals, which is the scene we are witnessing now. Some of these debtors are business owners or operators of small and medium-sized enterprises who have lost their creditworthiness due to the closure of their businesses and inability to repay bank loans, resulting in insolvency. Some of them were once white-collar workers, including executives from foreign companies. State-owned enterprises and large corporations. These former high-income individuals took on debt to buy houses, cars, and indulge in consumption during the years when the overall economic conditions were favorable. However, now they are suddenly facing pay cuts, layoffs, or unemployment due to the withdrawal of foreign investment. They have instantly lost their source of income and are unable to repay their substantial mortgages on time. Resulting in them becoming defaulters, others resorted to online loans for investment purposes. In the past, they managed to barely cope with their financial obligations by utilizing multiple credit cards and robbing Peter to pay Paul. However, as the economy declined, they were unable to borrow money, causing their financial chain to break. As a result, their credit cards became overdue, and they were listed as defaulters by the banks. Damn! I never imagined I'd end up like this at forty. Can't even scrape together a hundred bucks in my pocket and drowning in debt. All that talk of family, friendship, and love. Once you're in debt, all that's left is heartlessness. With the mountain of debt I have, I've lost everything. My cars, my house, and even had to shut down my beauty salon. This lady used to be the owner of a beauty salon, but perhaps due to poor management or the overall economic downturn, she's now bankrupt. With a massive amount of debt, she had to sell off all her properties and cars to repay it. She's now left penniless and burdened with a significant amount of debt. We're not sure if she has become a defaulter, but judging from her current situation of living with her brother, it's highly possible. In the following video, we have a young man who was once a key player in a company, earning a decent income. He took out a loan to buy a house, but unexpectedly, the company went bankrupt. Suddenly unemployed, he couldn't afford the high mortgage payments and ended up selling his car to put all the money toward the mortgage. But it still wasn't enough to keep up, and he ultimately became a deadbeat. I bought this house for 1.7 million initially, with a down payment of 700,000 and a loan of 1 million. The monthly mortgage was 6,800. But then, out of nowhere, I lost my job, and it really threw me off balance. I just can't handle it anymore. Certainly, among those who have defaulted on their debts, there are various groups of people. However, from what we understand, these defaulters are mostly individuals who previously had relatively high and stable incomes, often referred to as the middle class. In recent years, the so-called return to poverty crisis among the Chinese middle class is attracting increased societal attention. According to Forbes magazine, the middle class in China refers to city dwellers aged between 25 and 45 who hold a university degree. And whose annual income ranges from ten thousand to sixty thousand dollars. 
By this definition, the Chinese middle class encompasses approximately 100 million people, which is a vast number. As per the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, the middle class can be generally characterized as a group that has received a good education, has professional knowledge, possesses certain occupational abilities and consumption power, enjoys stable income and social status, is close to the minimum income level of the middle class, and is a group fraught with both anxieties and desires. However, their current anxieties outweigh their desires. Economic depression, investment failures, factory shutdowns, foreign capital withdrawal, large company layoffs, and the bursting of the real estate bubble, among other factors, have resulted in these once admired stable income earners, the societal elites, to quickly become highly indebted, with some even going bankrupt and falling into a state of poverty that seemed so distant to them before. So recently, there's this rumor online that about 700. 800 million people are in debt, with around 200 million teetering on the brink of default, and probably about 10 million or so called deadbeats, each one owing an average of 140,000. As someone working in the loan business in Zhengzhou, these numbers just hit me hard. It's like everyone is either in debt or on their way there. But of course, they say that out of the 700, 800 million people in debt. The vast majority are due to buying property, and well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? The young person in the video is spot on. A huge portion of wealth among Chinese people is locked up in real estate. According to reports from professional organizations, 80 percent of Chinese family wealth is in property. This type of asset distribution places significant limits on improving the quality of family life. And most families carry debt for their properties, leaving them with little surplus for other expenditures. A study by the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences reveals that Chinese households have a high debt-to-income ratio. For every 100 yuan earned, 15 have to go towards debt repayment. This can exceed 50 yuan if you consider the mortgage. Mortgage periods generally span two to three decades. During this time, if the stable income is lost, the mortgage quickly becomes their most pressing debt, capable of sending them swiftly back into poverty. Many end up having no choice but to abandon their homes and default on their payments, leading to court-ordered property auctions. Also, some small and medium enterprise owners use their property as collateral when obtaining financing. If they default on the loan and end up on a blacklist for enforcement. Their assets could be auctioned off at any time. Hence, we've been seeing an increase in the number of foreclosed properties over the past couple of years. Just this morning, the house next door got auctioned off by the court. The reason they couldn't keep up with the monthly payments anymore, and the court told them they had to move out. No ifs, ands, or buts. The couple has two kids. The older one's still in elementary school, and the younger one's in kindergarten. The wife was moving stuff out in tears. The kids had no clue what was happening. It's hard to imagine where this family of four is going to end up. Honestly, if things don't work out, they could end up in a divorce. This young man is a real estate broker in Chengdu, Sichuan Province, and according to him, he's handled many of these court auctioned properties. The court would sell these houses at 30 percent or even 40 to 50 percent discount. And if you factor in the decline in housing prices in recent years, the sale from the auction doesn't even cover the mortgage. So many families not only lose their homes but also continue to be saddled with bank loans. The video features a homeowner from Nanning, Guangxi Province, who shares his personal experience of the losses incurred when his house was auctioned off by the bank after he defaulted on payments. He explains that he bought the house two years ago for one million. Was a down payment of two hundred thousand and a loan of eight hundred thousand, was a monthly mortgage payment of four thousand eight hundred. After two years, he had paid back one hundred and thirty thousand, but only thirty thousand went towards the principal; the rest was all interest. Now, with the drop in housing prices, the house is valued at only eight hundred thousand. The court auctioned it off at thirty percent discount, making it five hundred and sixty thousand. And there's no guarantee it can even sell at that price. 
After adding attorney fees, lawsuit costs, fines, and considering the down payment and interest he's paid, he calculates that due to defaulting on the home, he's lost over 600000 Actually, there is a heartbreaking story and possibly a shattered family behind every foreclosed house. Recently, a video that moved many online users to tears surfaced. It shows a little girl standing at the entrance of her home, which is plastered with ceiling tape, looking utterly lost. The young girl doesn't comprehend what has happened, why she suddenly can't enter her own home. According to the latest statistics published by Hanhai Research Institute of Foreclosure Network, Beijing had 3,071 newly foreclosed homes in the first five months of 2023 averaging 614 new additions per month. Not just Beijing, but other cities are experiencing a similar surge in foreclosures. For instance, as of June, Xi'an had reached almost 50,000 homes foreclosed due to payment defaults. Recently, data from a 2023 National Foreclosure Big Data Analysis Report released by several investment research institutions revealed that from January to April, China listed over 146,000 foreclosed homes for sale, a year-on-year -year increase of 22.5%. This translates to at least 1,220 houses being auctioned every day. Additionally, data from the China Index Research Institute shows that in 2022, there were 606,000 foreclosure listings, a 35.7% increase from 2021. In fact, ever since foreclosed properties entered the market in 2017, the listing volume had been surging. The investigation reveals that a large number of these foreclosure sources come from individuals or small and medium-sized business owners. They use their homes as collateral when financing or borrowing. When they can't repay their debts, the court auctions the collateral. The properties that enter the court auction process are mainly residences, but also include factories, shops, and offices. The lady in the following video is a professional asset disposal specialist, and she is introducing a case she recently took on. What's the current situation for business owners in Dongguan? I was really taken aback by a business owner I met today. He owns three houses in Nancheng, along with factories, offices, and equipment, which together are worth tens of millions. However, everything that could be mortgaged has been mortgaged, and he's currently drowning in debt, owing money to his suppliers. He reached out to me, hoping I could help him solve his pressing problems. The surge in foreclosed homes isn't just a problem for certain individuals or families anymore but it's a reflection of a deteriorating economic and market environment in China, indicative of the country's current poor economic condition. The woman in the following video said that she started a plastic injection molding factory in 2019 as an investment. She didn't anticipate that the following year would see the onset of the pandemic, which caused her factory to struggle. She thought that after weathering three years of the pandemic, things would start to get better but they only got worse. In the end, she had no choice but to shut down the factory. There are also some small business owners with brick-and-mortar shops who, due to poor business performance, have no choice but to shut their doors to stop the losses. Data from the Supreme Court indicates that as of January 2023, there were 2,335 bankruptcy cases under review across the nation. Of these, Zhejiang made up 391 cases, representing 16.7% an indirect reflection of the pressure felt by coastal processing businesses due to declining overseas orders. The growth rate of foreclosures in the commercial and industrial categories vastly surpasses that in the residential category, supporting the fact that the number of bankruptcies in China is continually on the rise.
The current lifestyle of the manufacturing business owner in the video below provides a glimpse into how China's manufacturing sector is waning and how business owners are dealing with the increasing pressure. Hey, fellow manufacturing bosses, I'm not sure if you're in the same boat as me, but I've got some serious insomnia going on. I can't get to sleep until after 3 a.m. Sometimes I'm just up all night, day in, day out. I'm living in this fog. I've seen loads of videos online about many manufacturing bosses who've ended up in mental hospitals. I really hope I don't become one of them. Although the number of foreclosed homes is growing, the transaction rate is continually sliding downhill. The stats show that only about 27% of these foreclosed homes actually sell, a drop of nearly 5% compared to last year. Bidders aren't rushing in, even when the starting prices are usually around 70% of similar properties. This is particularly true for commercial buildings where the number of interested buyers is meager. As a flood of companies face debt crises and must liquidate their assets, there is a lack of new industrial power in the market. This indicates that China's economy has entered a downturn, a trend that's likely to continue. Truth be told, this surge in foreclosures is just an extreme manifestation of the middle class becoming impoverished. Many have not been able to dodge the wave upon wave of layoffs and pay cuts. The sharp decline in income has plunged them into a massive financial crisis, and they're struggling under the weight of hefty mortgage payments. The middle class is supposed to be the backbone of society, a vital group that drives consumption growth and underpins social stability. But now, a large number of middle class wealth is held hostage by real estate. Saddled with heavy debts, they've become house slaves, causing some to fall back into poverty losing their sense of security. This undoubtedly presents a significant challenge for the Chinese Communist Party, which has always prioritized stability as its ultimate goal.